In this video, I'd like to discuss a question from the 2022 Advanced Place in the United States Government and Politics exam, um, number one in set number one of the free response questions. The first question is, in the 2000 election, Ralph Nader won the Green Party nomination for President of the United States. While he trailed the Democratic and Republican candidates in the polls by a wide margin, Nader attracted large audiences and campaign appearances across the country. In an interview from 2016, Nader discussed the challenges he faced in his campaign for president, but there are only two that get on the presidential debate, Republican and Democrat, because they control the gate. Had I got on the debates in my presidential run, I would not one debate. I would have reached more people by 50-fold than I reached by filling all the major arenas. Never mind that you represent majoritarian positions like full Medicare for all, like loosening up the electoral process so more people can get in and run and vote. It doesn't matter that you represent majoritarian positions that are taken off the table by the Republican and Democratic Party. So I'd like to discuss some possible solutions to A, B, and C. So A is describe a structural barrier in the scenario that makes it less likely that a third party candidate will be able to secure enough popular support to just find claim the candidate in the debate. So a possible solution to this is as the candidate with the most votes wins the electoral votes in each state, it's hard for a third party candidate to win enough electoral votes to win the presidency or possibly for that third party candidate can't could also be elected is in the House of Representatives. So pushing an election to where one candidate can't win over 270 electoral votes, pushing that the House of Representatives is not very likely with a third party candidate as states electoral votes are mostly winner take all except Maine and Nebraska. B in the context of the scenario explain how a third party candidate could still have an influence on public policy despite the barrier described in part A. As candidates try to adopt popular positions and more people into their parties, major parties may adopt positions of popular third parties. So basically, you know, the major parties, Republicans and Democrats try to at times adopt some popular ideas which aren't held by either of the parties to bring in more supporters to their party and if there's a very popular third party with some idea one of those two parties might take it in to try to capture the, that third party's share of voters. And then C explain how including the third party candidate in the scenario could have had a positive impact on participatory democracy. Including the third party candidate in the scenario could have had a positive impact on participatory democracy as more people could see ideas that they like and then more people would be inclined to vote if in the participatory democracy more people are likely to participate if they see something they like or see something they approve of and let's say some voters didn't like what the Republican or Democrat was proposing but they liked what um, Ralph Nader was proposing well then they go to support Ralph Nader and the Green Party because they found a unique idea that he had and that they found unique to them and that they supported.